This video explains how to draw table objects in a plot using the R programming language. So without much talk, let's dive into the R code. As a very first step, we need to create some data that we can show in a table in R. So for this, we can execute line two of the code. And after running this line of code, a new data object called X is appearing at the top right. And we can print this data object to the RStudio console by running line three of the code. And then you can see that our data object is a vector that contains eight different letters. Now, if we want to create a table based on this data object, we can apply the table function, as you can see in line five of the code. So we have to apply the table function to our data object X, and then we need to store this table in a new data object that I'm calling my tab. So after running line five of the code, you can see that this new table object my tab is appearing at the top right, and we can print our table to the bottom in the RStudio console by running line six of the code. And then you can see that our table contains four different columns, A, B, C, and D. And each of these columns contains a frequency count of the corresponding value. So for instance, the value A is appearing only once, and the letter D is appearing three times in our example data object. Now, a typical way to visualize such a table is based on bar plots. And if we want to create a bar plot using the basic installation of the R programming language, we can apply the bar plot function to our table object, as you can see in line eight. So after running this line of code, a new bar plot is shown at the bottom right of our studio. And as you can see, the X axis of this bar plot corresponds to the different elements in our table, A, B, C, and D. And the height of the bars corresponds to the frequency counts in this table. Now, in this example, I have shown how to draw a bar plot using base R. However, it's also possible to use add-on packages for this task, such as the ggplot2 package. And this is what I want to show you in the next part of this tutorial, starting in line 10. So in lines 10 and 11, I'm first installing and loading the ggplot2 package. I have installed this package already, so for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 11 of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the ggplot and geombar functions of the ggplot2 package to draw our table in a ggplot2 bar plot. So after running lines 13 to 15 of the code, you can see that another bar plot is created and this bar plot is based on the ggplot2 package. Another way how you could visualize a table is based on histograms. This is not a typical way to do that, but depending on your specific data, you might also want to draw a histogram of a table. And we can do that using the hist function, as you can see in line 17 of the code. So in this line of code, I'm creating a base R histogram as you can see at the bottom right. So in the previous examples, I have shown how to visualize a table that was created using the table function. However, sometimes you might also want to visualize a correlation matrix table in a graphic. And this is what I want to show you in the final example of this tutorial, which starts in line 19. So in line 19, I'm first importing an example data frame. In this case, I'm importing the iris data set, which contains different information on flower species. So after running line 19 of the code, you can see the iris set appearing at the top right. And we can have a look at the first six rows of the iris data set by running line 20 of the code. So as you can see, this data frame contains five columns and the first four columns contain numeric values. Now, if we want to calculate a correlation table based on these numeric columns, we can use the core function, as you can see in line 22. And within this function, we need to specify a subset of the iris data set, which contains only the numeric columns in the iris data set. And then I'm assigning the output of the core function to a new data set that I'm calling iris core. So after running line 22 of the code, this new data set is appearing at the top right, and we can print our new 
correlation matrix data set by running line 23 of the code. And then you can see that we have created a correlation matrix based on the four numeric columns of the iris data set. Now, one way to visualize this correlation table is based on heat maps. And for this, we could apply the functions of the P heat map package. And in order to apply these functions, we first need to install and load the P heat map package, as you can see in lines 25 and 26. I have installed this package as well. So for that reason, I'm just going to load it with line 26 of the code. And then in the next step, we can use the P heat map function, as you can see in lines 28 and 29. And within the P heat map function, we need to specify the name of our correlation table. And in this case, I also want to display the numbers of the correlation matrix. So if you run lines 28 and 29 of the code, you can see that another plot is appearing at the bottom right, which is visualizing our correlation matrix in a heat map. That's all I wanted to explain in this video. In case you want to learn more on this topic, you may check out my homepage statisticsglobe.com because on my homepage I have recently published a tutorial in which I'm explaining the content of this video in some more detail. I will put a link to this tutorial into the description of the video so you can find it there. If you have liked this video or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments section below. I'll try to respond to all comments as soon as I can. Furthermore, make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel to get notified about future video releases. I have already published about 500 videos on this channel and I'm releasing new videos on a daily basis. Thanks a lot for watching. See you in the next video.